As now ranking member of the House Select Committee on Intelligence, Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff of California. Now he's helping lead the House investigation into Russia. I, I take it you'll be watching what comes out of uh, these interviews today. And, and what, what seems most striking to you or what question would you love to hear Donald Jr. answer? Uh, we'll certainly be looking for whatever uh, information the Senate is willing to share. We expect to have uh, Don Jr. come before our committee as well. Uh, look, I, I think the most important questions are going to be what happened before the meeting, during and after the meeting. And in the category of after the meeting, uh, what role did the president play in fabricating that statement about what the meeting was all about? Uh, of course, uh, that fabrication suggested it was all about adoptions. Uh, and concealed the fact that the whole premise of the meeting was to get dirt on Hillary Clinton that was being offered as part of the Russian government to help uh, Donald Trump. Uh, so a lot of the details of the meeting are going to be very significant. But what we try to do in these interviews, frankly, because we can't always expect that the witnesses are going to be fully uh, honest with us, uh, is we try to look for other witnesses uh, that were either present, that were involved in setting up the meetings, uh, that may have relevant documents, uh, so that we have a way of either corroborating or disproving uh, what we are told about the contents of this meeting or others. So those are the kind of things that I would be looking for and will look for when he comes before our committee. Mike. Congressman, Devin Nunes, the chair of your committee, the Republican chair of your committee, has he recused himself or not? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, he was supposed to have recused himself, said that he recused himself or stepped aside. Uh, but nonetheless has insisted on continuing to issue subpoenas, uh, in this case uh, not only subpoenas but letters to the DOJ threatening to hold the Attorney General in contempt. He shouldn't be doing any of this uh, if he has truly stepped aside or recused himself. Uh, we continue to raise this issue with the majority. Uh, that's an authority, that is the subpoena power that should have been delegated to Mr. Conaway in consultation with myself. Uh, and I find it inexplicable that the chair continues to try to exercise this authority. So you have a runaway chair? Well, in this case, yes, we do. And uh, it's obviously creating some turbulence in the committee. Uh, we're determined to plow ahead and try to ignore the distractions. Uh, but it is not very helpful to be picking a fight with the DOJ and the FBI. Uh, it also you know, violates the practice of the committee, which is we seek voluntary compliance uh, in getting information before we contemplate a subpoena. And here, there was no written request, let alone bipartisan request, uh, that we felt the DOJ or FBI was stonewalling on. So I don't understand the point, except I suppose uh, this is an effort uh, by the chair to discredit Mr. Steele and maybe discredit uh, the FBI and in its investigation. Uh, but I see little purpose in that if our goal is to get to the truth. Congressman Elise Jordan here. When do you expect Paul Manafort to come and meet with your committee? Well, what we're trying to do uh, with w the people that I would consider the, the principals like uh, Manafort and Don Jr. is to make sure that we've reviewed all the documents we want to ask these witnesses about and that we have some of the preliminary witnesses come in first. Uh, now, in control of the timing, as certainly those of us in the minority are not, but even uh, as a committee, uh, because there are other committees that are also bringing in these witnesses. Uh, so, uh, and we also want to try to coordinate not only with, with each other, but with Bob Mueller. Uh, so I, I can't tell you the precise dates. Uh, a lot of it should be dependent on the progress of the investigation, but the timing hasn't always worked out that way. Congressman, based on what we know Facebook did and any suspicions you have about what they might have done that we don't know about yet, did they put profits ahead of patriotism in their conduct during the campaign? I don't think we can reach that conclusion uh, without knowing a lot more. Uh, certainly, we'd like to know what Facebook was aware of at the time uh, when they discovered that, in fact, that these were this was a foreign entity uh, controlled by the Kremlin that was buying advertising with an intent to influence our election. Uh, so I wouldn't uh, jump to the assumption that this was something that we're knowledgeable about in real time. Um, I do want to know a lot more, and I have a lot more questions in terms of how exhaustive uh, the research uh, was that they did, what assumptions they operated under, why they have reached certain conclusions, what they can tell us about uh, geographic targeting, whether there's a level of sophistication that we wouldn't expect without having data analytics that uh, may have come from the campaign. Uh, all of these are just questions, and I don't know the answers. Uh, but, uh, you know, I do appreciate the fact that uh, Facebook is doing a deep dive in this. I don't think this is the end of the story, though, and certainly we need to find out from other social media platforms that we're also in communication with 
whether they uh, have done a similar internal analysis and whether the Russians used those other platforms as well. Congressman, it's Willie Geis. Good to see you this morning. We've been talking Good to, to you. you coming up on a year or so now about the relationship, the influence that Russia tried to exert on the United States presidential election. With the understanding there are things that you can't disclose to us here on national television, are you more or less convinced than you were, say, even a few months ago, that the Trump campaign had a relationship with the Russian government as it tried to influence the election? Well, clearly there's some relationship here. Uh, there are just too many meetings uh, that have been confirmed uh, by the, the Trump organization and publicly at this point. Uh, if you and I had said when we first started talking about this uh, six months or nine months ago that we would find evidence effectively in black and white that the Russians through intermediaries approached the top people in the campaign, including the president's own son, uh, and offered help derogatory information about Hillary Clinton as part of the Russian government to help Mr. Trump and that the campaign accepted that invitation, uh, you would have said you'll never find that. No one's going to be putting that in writing. And yet that has been found. Uh, so we do know a lot more. I, I think the claims that there was no evidence of collusion have long since fallen away. Uh, the question now is what is the, the quantum of proof here? There's certainly very, I think, vivid public evidence of an intent to work with the Russians, to receive help from the Russians. Uh, there's still a lot of questions that we need to answer about the follow through on that, what preceded that. Uh, so I'm not ready to, to make any conclusions, but we know a lot more than we did six or nine months ago. From where you sit, is intent enough in an indictment, or do you need to see a direct line between the Trump campaign and the Russians? Uh, intent is generally never enough. Uh, you have to have some <laughs> act uh, in concert with the intent. Uh, whether it's a conspiracy or some other uh, underlying uh, offense. Uh, so, no, I don't think intent is enough. Uh, but, of course, uh, we have not just intent here, and uh, again, talking about the public evidence, you have a consistent and concerted campaign to deny and conceal the truth. Uh, just looking at that one meeting and all the various uh, explanations and false statements surrounding it, um, you know, is a pretty good further intention of a knowledge guilt here. Uh, so, uh, you know, a lot more work to be done. And again, I don't want to uh, draw any conclusion at this point. Uh, but uh, uh, the fact that there are all of these unexplained contacts uh, and all this effort to either conceal or mislead about them uh, continues to raise profound and 